Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Dexter with Russo's Reptiles and today we're going to go over the call albino. So if you're new to the hobby, you're probably confused as to what all the genetic talk is, uh, what the hell a morph is. On top of all that, it's kind of hard to find information. So, um, you can use Google, but Google normally just brings you to Morph Market or somebody's website and they're trying to sell you something instead of give you information. And uh, unfortunately, with Facebook being the king of social media that it is, um, it kind of killed off a lot of the older forums. They're still there, but it's really hard to find that information that with years and years of information compiled in those forums. Um, I miss the forum days. I, I wasn't around for that. Uh, but you hear a lot of the older guys talking about the forums. King Snake, um, I think Fauna had some forums. As long as classifieds, uh, boaconstrictor.com or redtailboa.com. Uh, so a lot of the older forums are kind of lost on the newer keepers. And then also with Facebook, you have uh, them cracking down on the boa groups. So a lot of the boa groups that were there a year ago no longer exist because uh, PETA came in, bought a bunch of shares of Facebook, and then you know they decided that. You know how PETA is, they hate anybody that has an animal as a pet or uses an animal, you know, for some type of gain they feel. So uh, they came in, basically booted a lot of Facebook groups that involved animals, uh, even if they weren't selling or using it to sell. And then you got a lot of jackasses on the groups that are available today that can't follow simple instructions and put the groups that are still around in jeopardy every day. So. Don't be that person if you are new. Don't post any bite pictures or selling uh, posts or whatever. Just don't do it. You're ruining it for everybody that is trying to learn. Um, so I'm going to try to compile through multiple media sources that I've used. Books, YouTube, listening to podcasts like Boa Rack Radio. Um, if you haven't listened to Boa Rack Radio... I'm not affiliated with Carlos or any of those guys. I, I honestly have never met any of them. I just enjoy the podcast. So if you haven't listened to it, it's on, uh, I think it's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Google. I listen to it on the way to work a lot. So uh, very informative stuff. Check that out. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to take a compilation of all that and do a simple explanation of how the morph uh, for call about it works and a brief history of it. So let's uh, let's get going. The call albino was the mutation that really kicked it off for the boa morph king. The call strain of albino is named after Peter Call. Peter Call is one of the old school legends of the boa and ball python worlds. This morph is a mutation of the boa imperator or imperator and is generally considered Colombian. I've got several different numbers in doing my research. The internet seems to agree on four. Vin Russo in his books says five, and other places I've heard seven. But there was a group of wild caught boas imported into the country or into the United States in 1983 or 84. These specimens came in from a boa farm in Colombia. What these boa farms do is they catch a wild caught gravid female or a breeding pair. They collect the babies once the mother drops and they sell them to the pet trade. The original group of boas was cared for, but the original owner could never get them to reproduce. In 1989, Peter Call and Paul Miles of Maryland Reptile Breeders purchased two males from the original group that was imported in. They were able to breed one of the males to a normal female, and the first hets were born in the United States in 1992. Now, I found a few different places online that say the first captive visual was actually produced in 1992. I'm sure that uh, somebody that's been around for a long time can leave a comment below and confirm one way or the other, but I tend to lean more on the information in the Boa Bible or the complete Boa Constrictor from Vin Russo. That's just me. Something else that I heard, and I believe it was on an episode of Boa Rack Radio. Once again, awesome podcast. You should check it out. Um, it was that when the heads were put together to actually prove out the gene, 
from the original breeding, um, there was 20-ish something babies, and all of the babies came out normal except for the final boa dropped and was a visual albino. So this proved out the gene and uh, really kicked off things for the morph side of the hobby. And it's just it just raises the question of where would we be now had that albino baby not popped out? So that was pretty much the historical side of things. I know it's not concrete. I'm sure Peter Call, if he ever made a video or explained it, the history would be much more accurate, but this is just what I can find. Um, so there's your history, your basic history on it. Um, now I'm going to try to go over, you know, what is the call albino? What What is it? Um, I'm going to go over what it looks like. We've already covered where it came from. Um, it is a BI. I'm going to go over a couple lines, visual appearance, and uh, talk about it being a simple recessive and the basic breakdown of how breeding it to produce the visual form of it. So this form of albinism is considered an amelanistic or a tyrosinase negative form. What this means is that there is a complete lack of black or melanin or dark pigments with the pink or red eyes and a pink tongue. This form of albinism is actually considered a true form of albinism. The body of the snake tends to be a mix of yellows and whites with the spots that would have been black on a normal tended to be a subtle bluish tone mixed in with the white and the tails being a red or an orange. The calls do tend to yellow out with age, but there are some exceptional specimens produced via line breeding. And uh, even though this is one of the oldest morphs, even today we're still getting new gene combos. So uh, there are some exceptional lines of a call one of them being the coral, which was produced by uh, Peter Call, came out in a couple of his breedings of his uh, call strain, popped up. Uh, I mean, it, it's basically what the name says, it has a lot of coraling in the colors. I had some pictures I was gonna post in the video, but due to copyright, I'm just gonna let you guys go surf the internet and figure it yourself out. Um, there's also the lipstick line. Uh, this is made famous by Tom Burke, Burke Reptiles. Um, lipstick line just basically makes the colors pop so where your reds and your oranges are you can get a really really red tail mainly um you, once again just just google it you'll see i have some lipstick line in uh maganda i hope to prove her out one day with that but uh yeah that's, that's basically it on the lines um there, there's all kind of new stuff popping up just with the new genes that are coming into the hobby, you mix them into the calls. I, I would con I would say there are some calls that can hold their own to some of the VPI stuff and even some of the uh, the sharp stuff. I'm not a huge fan of sharp, um, but that's just me. And now I'm trying. I'm gonna try to give like a really simple, down and dirty explanation of uh, genetics. The call is considered a simple recessive gene or genotype. So basically, if you take a call albino and a call albino and you breed them together, you'll have a hundred percent homozygous or visual call albinos. That's it. Now, if you take a call albino and a normal and you breed them together, you'll have a hundred percent heterozygous, which means a gene carrier of the uh, call albino. All right, so then you take the 100% hetero and the 100% heterozygous, and you breed them together, and you'll have 25% of the offspring come out homozygous or visual. You'll have a visual albino, 25% of that litter, and then the rest will be 66% het. Or, or heterozygous, which means they carry the genes. So that just means that if you take one of those 66% heads and you breed it off, there's a chance it may not hit. Same thing, you start getting into the 50%, um, you got a 50% chance of hitting it, or you don't. Um, that's really the down and dirty for it. Heterozygous is carrier of the gene. Homozygous is 
visually they have the gene they are showing the visual form um, you may think back to your Punnett squares when you were in middle school or high school and you were learning how that you know you take the pink flower and the red flower and that gives you this color flower and blah 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 or you, you did your mom's eyes were this color your dad's eyes were this color what colors are your brother's eyes going to be stuff like that so think Punnett squares and if you don't want to do a Punnett square you can always use a morph calculator uh, morph market has a really good morph calculator um, you put in what the mother or the father is and you hit calculate and it'll break down all the possible offspring uh, outcomes within whatever parameters you set the calculator for. So um, I hope this video helped. Um, they do say that the best way to learn something is to teach somebody, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing with these videos. I'm trying to cement this knowledge into my head by going out and doing the research because I don't want to put any bad information out so I'm forcing myself to look up the right information and then by recording it and going over and over it again I am teaching myself while I'm teaching you so um, hopefully it's helping I mean it is helping me but hopefully it's helping you as well and if you got any questions shoot me a question uh, leave your comments below good or bad I'll normally answer all of them unless they're just dumb and I'll just ignore you um, hit the subscribe button like it really does help I know everybody says that but it really does help um, appreciate it and hope y'all have a good day night morning whatever time it is later guys